So what, I, what I'd like to cover, I guess, is uh, some of the, the things we've been doing at La Trobe for uh, a couple of years in training up uh, research uh, librarians in research data management and uh, sort of where we've come from and, and where we're going to. So I'd just like to acknowledge uh, that this presentation is a, a sort of an ad adaptation of one we did at the e-research conference uh, last year in Melbourne and that was done uh, with Kerry Sullivan and Mina Nichols-Boyd as well. But this is sort of an update of, uh, of where we've come from and, and where we're going uh, to. Just I guess about La Trobe, we, we have this wonderful statue in our Bandura campus, our Melbourne campus by the sculptor Charles Robb which really uh, sort of gives an, a, an indication of what we're going to sort of cover today. And I guess what I'll, what I'll do is I'll also talk a little bit about La Trobe if people uh, don't know that we were established in 1964 and we opened in 1967. Uh, we have about 30,000 students and we're across five uh, different campuses across the state of Victoria. And today I'm at our, Albury, our wonderful Albury Wodonga campus and we have other regional campuses in Victoria and our main campus in, in Melbourne where, where the bulk of our students are. I, I guess the, the, uh, the metaphor here is that we, this sculpture is about universities turning ideas on their heads and I guess our, our journey with our librarians uh, learning about research data management for them is really turning them on their heads and thinking differently about the work that they do and, and how they uh, support researchers. And so um, yeah, I guess for, um, what, what we were coming from was a, a situation where we had librarians um, who were supporting teaching and learning and research and doing their, their usual, what we called faculty librarian work, and then coming in and into the, the more technical area of, uh, of the library, which was the digital infrastructure area last year and the year before, in terms of looking at the uh, repository and research data management and, and more technical aspects of, uh, of that work and discovering uh, what was being done there and how they could then advocate for that and talk to our researchers and support their needs. And so I guess uh, the, the other metaphor for this statue on its head is, um, and the, the statues of, uh, of Governor Charles Latrobe, actually I should say also, <laughs> in case you didn't notice, um, the other metaphor is that the university has really turned itself on its head after a, a big restructure last year. Uh, so that's you know been a really big change for the university and the library is positioning itself to, uh, to help with that. So what we've been, uh, what the university has been talking about is its uh, future ready agenda. So uh, we've been looking at its, the strategic plan and the research plan which is, has a, a really strong emphasis on um, supporting researchers and really making sure that they're productive and that their research is well known and well described, that they can, that we, we really help them promote that research and that we, we position ourselves to really, really help them uh, in terms of their uh, what what their outputs are, and uh, in in order for for uh, people to be productive, to also you know in, in, I guess improve Latrobe's situation in terms of how uh, its research is known and what its international ranking is, and uh, the income it gets from research and all those kind of uh, areas. And so that restructure of the university, um, which has gone across the whole university, has uh, really had a big impact on the library as well, as I said. So the library really has uh, put itself in place to, uh, to really work with researchers and uh, do as much as they can to help them. Uh, this is the size of our, our population at um, La Trobe. And we're, we're not a hugely research intensive university, but we still do a lot of research and we have a lot of people to support. So we see that as a, a really important a thing for the library to support researchers and we've really uh, done a lot to, to make sure we can do that. So I guess the new areas for our, our future ready agenda for the university were the five research focus areas which are listed there and also the different disciplinary uh, research programs. And so um, being able to engage with those different areas and really support them is seen as a, a you know, a, a change for the library. It's not uh, just about supporting a particular faculty or a particular school, it's really supporting researchers who are doing big projects across multidisciplinary areas and partnerships with other institutions and research income and all those kind of things. Uh, so they're, they're really important. What our, what our approach was in the last couple of years, so 20, uh, 2013 to 2014, um, initially we had, uh, so as I mentioned before, we had a digital infrastructure team who were responsible for our repository uh, the ANS projects we'd done up till then in research data management uh, as well as other areas uh, for the library but 
uh, in terms of research data management it was the focus on the repository and, and publishing data through the repository and it was just done within that digital infrastructure team and all the work we'd done uh, on ANS projects we had a uh, you know we'd done a couple of different ANS projects to publish our data through the repository and publish to Research Data Australia they were really focused on just the team in digital infrastructure working on that and only involving other people uh, from time to time so it was really done as a separate very technical work advocacy going out and talking to academics but it really contained within that area and we felt that it was time to really change that uh, it was recognized in 2012 early 2013 that we needed to change that and get uh, faculty librarians to really engage with that work and train them up and, and get them up to speed because we saw that that was the, the future, it was a really important thing for them to, to advocate for that, uh, that work that was being done. So we, uh, we had initially had two faculty librarians who commenced in our area in digital infrastructure. Uh, they were uh, in there for an eight week period for one day a week and, and two librarians came in and, and really we trained them up initially in uh, what we were doing in the digital infrastructure area so I'll cover what that was a little bit later and then what we thought was then how do we you know do we, is that a good model we sort of reviewed what we did there had they learnt um, new things could they then share that with their their teams when they went back to their faculty based uh, you know teams that they were working with and could they then have other people coming in and using the same model to learn about what was going on and, and get them up to speed so that was the model that we did between uh, 2013 and 2014 and we ended up with 10 faculty librarians who uh, went through that program of work through the digital infrastructure area and uh, but one of them Kerry Sullivan was uh, she commenced she was one of the, the two who originally started in 2013 and she uh, continued on one day a week for the whole period for the whole period of uh, one and a half years and we felt that was really important for that continuity for her to help train up new people as they came in uh, to to the area. So when when I was saying uh, each librarian came in for eight weeks, it was one day a week for eight weeks. So it was really only eight days. It sounds like a lot, but it's only eight days, and they had a lot to do uh, in order to to uh, learn new things and and um, get up to speed, I guess. Just in terms of our our restructure and and where we were sitting, and we this is the digital infrastructure area as it was. And so uh, we were under Jeff Payne as our associate university librarian, and this area in red here that I, I've got a sort of a dotted red line here is the group that were working on the research data management work in, with the repository and advocacy with the uh, researchers and and all that sort of area. And we, um, we and we had the research what we called research data librarians uh, come into our area and, and work with that group. Um, so we had other repository staff down here and we also had other, other staff working in different areas. So a team of about 11 uh, people at that time, but only uh, four people or three people sort of in, involved in the research data management side and the librarians coming in and then the repository team underneath that. And now with our, uh, following our restructure at the end of last year, uh, this is this is what we the new team looks like and this is the research team now so it's a, a new team completely dedicated to supporting high degree research students and researchers across the university across all our campuses so the the positions in blue are the new ones you know, that came into the area and were had to be advertised and we recruited those people there are other people who came across in the restructure from different areas or we had to go out and recruit new people and then the other ones in sort of this grey colour here were the people already in place dealing with the repository, dealing with uh, the, the research data management and, and, and all those areas and so I moved out of that area and, I, and Eva Fish is our manager of the research team and uh, she manages that new uh, re research group that are supporting researchers and um, I'm her director. So our, our current approach uh, is really uh, what we've been doing is, is forming our new team based and, and looking at all the services they provide to researchers to help them deal with their research so it's not all about research data management so there's a lot of uh, dot points there sort of explaining the kinds of things that that group do and uh, but the it, it really is it has been a, a fantastic thing that the the library has decided to support research is in it with a dedicated team who can put all of their efforts into supporting them so they've got a lot to do uh, they're a new team they've got a lot a lot to learn and we and through the restructure um, we've had only uh, you know one or two people or two people who were involved in that uh, earlier work coming into 
the digital infrastructure area, learning about uh, research data management, who've continued on in the research team and others have moved on to the learning and teaching team. So uh, the library, uh, in terms of our librarians who formerly were faculty librarians, are now over either in the learning and teaching team or they're in the research team. Um, so it's been quite a shift in terms of how we, we uh, support our academics and our high degree students. So I, um, just in terms of what people did when they were trained up in our area, the, um, we threw an eight week program. There was a lot to do, as I said before. So it was uh, focused on a, a, a mentoring approach and self-paced learning as well as meetings with uh, the digital infrastructure team, going through training about uh, what uh, the work they're doing and how they support researchers and what their approach has been and looking at new ways of approaching academics and, and helping. So we had a, a sort of a general introduction as, as a, the first thing that came along to the digital infrastructure area and the work we did. Um, then after that, a, a, a mentoring from Kerry Sullivan who was already working in the area one day a week covering the kind of approach we've had and the kinds of conversations we're having with researchers. Then a self-paced learning approach where each of each of the librarians who came into our area really went through all of the sort of things like ANS webinars, um, the different different websites that they'd found, different areas that they that we we noted as being really important sites for them to get up to speed with and understand. Uh, they also went through previous minutes and agendas from meetings through the last year or so that we'd had in terms of um, our ANS projects and what we'd done and, and where we'd got to uh, and speaking with each individual in the digital infrastructure team and then getting getting up to speed with all of that information uh, which which took some time as a steep learning curve. It's a bit like saying here's, here's a couple of or two or three years of knowledge about research data management that we're going to throw at you you know in, an, in like an eight day period. It's a heck of a lot to learn and then once they were confident that they knew something about what they were trying to what we were trying to achieve then going out and contacting their connect their researchers that they have dealt with in, in the different faculties and uh, talking to them emailing them initially then following up finding out um, where they're at helping them uh, you know talking about what we're doing and what we're trying to achieve and finding out if they have research data needs and what they were and publishing through the repository we also had a, a sort of a general training uh, template that we or a, a training template that was built up by the librarians to do training of academics and high degree research students about research data management. So that was one of the tasks we said as being go and create that and do that. And we're going to um, run some training sessions later, you know, in the year when people are comfortable. Get get that whole template working and get all the information prepared and ready, so that each of those librarians could go and deliver those uh, sessions, those training sessions. And then one of the early tasks that was also undertaken was to uh, create a LibGuide on uh, using LibGuides to create a, a research data management uh, LibGuide to really sort of record and cover all, the, all of the sort of key things that we thought were important around research data management and use as a, either a training tool or a tool to refer people to as help for training other librarians as they came in to the area, all those kind of things. Uh, we covered things like, you know, what were the drivers for change? What's why are we doing this work now? What what have been the drivers? What are the funding agencies saying? What's the government saying? What do we need to be saying to academics to say why why would they even be interested in this? So going through the whole background around that and what it means and getting familiar with the um, the guidelines and and those areas uh, so that people understood what they were talking about. So this is the kind of thing we covered. Things to do with the open access policies. Things to do with research data and managing your research data. And then we went through also a, a sort of a very uh, detailed uh, run through what had been done locally in terms of our content and what we've been doing with it. So this is a, a list of uh, some of the things that we really were covering and some of it really quite technical and sometimes maybe too technical, I don't know. Um, but we wanted to get a sense of you know, the work we'd done and the understanding from a, a repository side and a research data management side and then get the librarians to go away and think about how that meant in terms of um, them being able to understand that background and being able to sell the story and talk about it with some kind of confidence, I guess. So things, so lots of lots of acronyms, lots of new things that people had to know about if they didn't already. So things like OAI, PMH, and uh, DC metadata, and you know, and linked data, and open access, and you know, all sorts of things in terms of how we we set up, we've set up our repository and the work we've done. Uh, we we also looked at you know local issues at Latrobe, uh, so our own data management policy and where that's at and what it, 
what it says, getting people to understand what that meant, and also, as I said before, in terms of covering, you know, ANS and all the advocacy that ANS have done in this area, going back and um, reviewing those, uh, the advice they've got on the ANS website, and and all the, the really useful information that ANS has produced over the, the past few years. In terms of the repository, we also wanted to go through things in detail about. Uh, what we had in the repository, what was driving the content going in, what types of information we had in there, what formats they were in, you know, how it got in there, all those kind of things, and getting people really familiar with that. And I guess one of the things uh, about the repository, also people working in the repository space for a long time, has been that the repository is a like a portal for pushing information out externally beyond the university, so that there's discovery of that material externally, and dr it drives. Um, traffic back to the repository and back to the university and really going through that it's not just a catalogue internally of what we have, it's also pushing and publicising that information out and what the impact of that is and, and what it means. Um, and that was a sort of a different uh, perspective I guess for, for some people. And then I guess broader issues expanding that out into t things like official standards that we use in order to deal with the, the data that's in the repository, so new concepts like RIFCS and EAC CPF. Um, issues around maintaining identifiers for people and for records in the repository, uh, what data curation means and the managing of the data and the best practice around that and looking at the looking at Anne's advice on that, looking at uh, webinars and information from there, the digital curation centre, different sites, different uh, experiences from other institutions. Um, and then covering that whole, you know, how do we, how do, well, where does our data go and what does it really mean in terms of getting it out to Research Data Australia minting DOIs from datasite.org uh, and pushing that information into data citation index and what does that mean, all that kind of thing. The, I guess the other thing around self-paced learning is that the mantra site uh, is something we got everyone to go through. There's a lot of information in there but you know a fantastic site for people to really understand a, a whole lot about uh, research data management so that was something that was great that people uh, really found you know, librarians found that as a really useful resource, it was easy to use and accessible, it was open, uh, you know, a low barrier to going in there and just actually engaging with that and understanding that site. And I think we're all excited about uh, Melbourne University wanting to do a, like a local mantra for an Australianised one, that'd be a great thing coming along at some point. And in terms of, of capturing what people were learning, we also had our librarians created a, a Google site, uh, this is the front page of it. Um, which they used as a wiki to really record their own actions and their own thoughts about things and get themselves organised and put useful information on that site so that they could share with their colleagues either when they're in uh, the, the digital infrastructure area or when they're back at their desk doing their normal day-to-day um, -day work. It was a, a, a really good uh, place where they could uh, you know, communicate that between different staff they could really reflect and record, you know, what was going on and in instigate new programs. And uh, but it it also um, because it was a Google uh, site, it needed to be um, it, it was locked down to people who'd created that site, two or three or four. And as the ten came in, they were invited into that site. I think uh, in in retrospect, I'd be thinking we needed probably more of a a broader site for everyone to uh, have access to because not everyone could see what was in there uh, initially. Uh, this is the LibGuide and what it looked like in terms of uh, the uh, the site that's been uh, created around research data management. Uh, that was a you know a good learning instrument for people coming into uh, the research data management area. A good guide for uh, librarians to use themselves and um, has had some engagement and hits from uh, researchers and some um, you know feedback about it. Uh, the I guess from from a librarian perspective uh, of the the people who worked in in the area they. Um, from their point of view, they they saw they had a different perspective on on the work being done around research data management and advocacy and what was being done. They uh, have a, a very service oriented mentality, really wanting to help help clients with their needs, uh, and and that was a really good thing. It really brought uh, a different focus to the the research data management work that had been done previously, which was more around servicing a few people's needs and doing it. Um, getting the, the technology right and getting getting the systems up and working properly, but uh, the librarians really, you know, were great in terms of making sure everything was documented and understood widely, and therefore could go and share that information amongst themselves and be able to advocate properly for, uh, you know, research data management with their faculties. The 
librarians, they helped with the, de the development and structure of the data, uh, research data management planning form, which we created. Um, they provided a lot of advice on the structure of this page and other websites on the university site and on the library site around managing research data. They did some a, a lot of detailed investigation of um, researcher profiles and identities and using social networking sites, using ResearchGate and Academia, those kind of things. Um, they did lots of research into that, into how many people were using them and understanding what was being done there. Uh, they uh, used an, they created an email template, a standard template to send out to academics around uh, introducing themselves, what they were doing and asking if uh, the researcher needed help with their research data. Uh, that was that was followed up with phone calls and messages and things and meetings. And we used a we just used an Excel spreadsheet to track those conversations between ourselves. Uh, that really was in lieu of having any kind of uh, customer relationship management system, which we still don't have, and we need a better way of managing that. And as I said before, they uh, also created you know some classes around demystifying data management, which were uh, quite successful and went around to different campuses um, of the university. So we, we also did a couple of other things. We had some reskilling for research workshops, uh, one with Jenny Cameron in May 2013, which was excellent, and we got all of the librarians involved in that, as well as the people working on research data management and the repository. Uh, we also did the, the subject, QUT subject on research support for academic libraries that Gillian Hallam uh, runs as part of the master's program there, and that was a really, really excellent one as well. Uh, but we did that in partnership with Caval, and we had other people from different universities doing that at the same time. That was excellent. Uh, what worked and what didn't? The original approach was uh, very low key, uh, so it was low barrier. Um, didn't put a lot of pressure on people to do things and get up to speed immediately. They were supported through their time in digital infrastructure. Uh, the period of secondment was probably too short, and did it really change what they were doing? You know, it, it did sometimes and sometimes not. And so the new approach around our uh, restructure is having dedicated staff who can do this. So a more, much more long-term approach is working well, uh, more of an embedded approach so that they're, they're really um, working with researchers as much as they can. They've got more time to learn the terminology and understand requirements, although they probably would say that maybe that's not true. With our new structure and new uh, academics coming on board and lots of demands for their time, it's still very, it's hard to get up to speed with all that and we, you know, we need more time to, to train them up. So what have the librarians said themselves? You can read those screenshots there. Um, they, you know, they found it really good, really, a really good way of learning new things and, and wanted to normalise it as part of the norm, normal work that they do and you know, a really good way of supporting that work. And I guess the thing to understand was it was a natural fit with their skills in terms of what they needed to do. So librarians are really great at advocating services and being able to have, uh, to advocate what, you know, what, understand what researchers do and how they do research and therefore dealing with research data and research data management isn't such a stretch, especially when they're supported by people around them who've been doing that a lot. Uh, and then what we're going to do in the future is a whole lot more and we've got, our research team is very new and uh, so we've got still got a lot more that we have to do with that team and we're looking at skills uh, assessment and identification of gaps and training that they need to do and looking at you know a whole range of, of uh, services that we're doing and that they can uh, advocate for. I'd like to acknowledge the, the, the people in, in listed in black are the people who initially did the work in the digital infrastructure area and came into that area and, and uh, worked, and they were the ones who were trained up along with uh, the staff in that area and then the new team is, is planning that ongoing training so Eva's leading that with Tracy and Roderick and others in the research team. That's all I have so thank you.